Hello, and welcome to episode 3 of Bushcraft Basics. In this episode I'm going to talk about water, and I'll discuss the different contaminants you might find, and some different techniques that you can use to make it safe to drink. I'll also show you how to make a quick and easy emergency water filter using natural materials. So just a quick disclaimer, remember this series of videos are just things that I find helpful from spending a lot of time in the outdoors. There's always going to be an element of risk from drinking from natural sources, so educate yourself about the contaminants that are specific to your area and climate. So if you're from a dry environment, there's many techniques that you can use to actually locate a water source. However, I live in Scotland, it rains a lot and finding water is not usually a problem. So in this video I'm going to focus on how to purify it and make it safe to drink. Now if you remember back from episode 1 in Bushcraft Basics, we talked about the law of threes and how you can roughly survive three days without water, depending on your climate. Water is also generally the second priority of survival after shelter. So first it's important to understand what types and what levels of contaminants you can find in different types of water sources so that you can carry the right purification tools for your area. There are four main groups of contaminants you can find in water and these are chemicals, viruses, bacteria and parasitic protozoa. Chemical contaminants can include pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals and radioactive waste. Unfortunately toxic chemical contaminants are becoming increasingly common all around the world and they're incredibly difficult to get out of the water. In the case of pesticides they can be carried up into the atmosphere and come down in the rain miles away from where they were sprayed. Viruses are not as common to find in my area as most can't survive long outside of a host but in some areas of the world you need to be very cautious of them. It can be very, very small, up to 0.04 microns in size, so many filters don't stop them. Bacteria are one of the most common sources of illness, such as E. coli, and they can be abundant in water that is around human and animal feces or in stagnant pools. They can range from about 0.2 to 0.5 microns in size. Parasitic protozoa are also very common and include Giardia and Cryptosporidium. These can make you very ill if you ingest them. They tend to be larger, at around 5 microns in size. Now there are three main types of purification techniques that people will use in the field. And these are boiling, filtration and chemical purification. The boiling tends to be the most effective purification technique. And that's why a metal container was part of that 5C kit that we talked about in episode 1. Now if you're collecting from a really muddy source, it's always a good idea to pre-filter the water using a rag or a bandana like this as large clumps of dirt can protect bacteria and parasites from the heat of the water. You then want to have it on a rolling boil for about 3-5 to five minutes before it's safe to drink. Now the pros of boiling is that it pretty much kills all biological contaminants. There is some species of bacteria that can survive, but they're very very rare. But also, you need very little or very basic equipment to do it. You can just use any old sort of stainless steel water bottle that you might be carrying. Uh, if you didn't even have that, you could hollow out a log, heat up rocks in the fire and boil water with the hot rocks. Now the cons of boiling is that it takes a long time, you're going to need to light a fire or use your stove and sometimes you're not able to do that or it's not safe to do that and also it doesn't do anything about chemical contaminants. So next up is filtration and there's lots and lots of different filters that you can get on the market and I don't have time to go through them all. But when you're buying one, it's good to look out for the micron rating. So that's how smaller particles the filter can filter it. Uh, also, does it contain active carbon? Does it use UV? Things like that. Um, this is a, just a simple straw filter that I like to use. It's uh, also important to note most filters have a limited lifespan. I think this one does about 4,000 litres of water. Uh, and another good tip is that if, again, you're drinking from a muddy pool, it's good to pre-filter using a bandana or rag to get out the, the big chunks of dirt as that's going to dramatically improve the lifespan of your filter. So the pros of using a filter is that it doesn't take as long as boiling water or using chemical purification. Uh, and some active carbon filters claim to, to filter out some pesticides. But some of the cons about using a filter is that many don't stop viruses as the viruses are too small to be caught by the filter. However, UV filters do stop them, uh, and most of them have a limited use. But again, all these things depends on the type of filter that you buy. So finally we have chemical purification. 
and the most common ones are chlorine or chlorine dioxide or iodine and usually in the form of tablets or drops again it's recommended to filter out any large clumps of dirt first and then you leave your tablet in your bottle for about 10 minutes before it's safe to drink so the pros of chemical purification is that they're very lightweight you know I tend to carry these with me all the time because you know they don't really weigh anything uh, and they're effective against viruses which as I said some filters are not wherever the cons of these are you know they're not reusable once you ran out of them you're out of them um, as I said some are not effective against parasitic protozoa and some people believe that prolonged use of these is not good for your health so depending on the water source in your situation you could use all or none of these techniques if you wanted but I tend to carry a metal canteen a filter and some tablets with me all the time just in case now if you're in a survival situation and the only water source you have to have was just a muddy pool then it is possible to make a water filter using natural materials however I still highly recommend boiling the water afterwards just stay tuned and I'll show you how to make a really easy natural water filter so this is sphagnum moss and it's found in wet marshy areas like this. It's been used for thousands of years as a wound dressing as it's very very absorbent and it contains a natural antiseptic. Using this moss plus some charcoal from your fire and an old plastic bottle you can make an emergency water filter. First you need to improvise a container and unfortunately plastic bottles are just too easy to find. Cut off the funnel and then make some holes in the bottom of the bottle. Start with a dense layer of moss at the bottom of the bottle and then follow it with a dense layer of charcoal from your fire. Repeat the process so that you have multiple layers of moss and charcoal. But you can also use other types of material in the filter, such as dead dry grass, sand and certain types of volcanic rock. The simple filter is now ready to use, and to improve its effectiveness you can create a series of these filters to pour the water through. However, remember this is just for emergency purposes, and I would still highly recommend boiling the water afterwards. Sometimes it's not always necessary to purify water and uh, very often when I'm hill walking in Scotland I'll drink straight from the mountain streams uh, but ultimately it's down to you to assess the risks in your area and always carry purification tools with you. So thanks very much for watching, hope you find some of this useful and join me in the next episode of Bushcraft Basics where we'll be talking about everyone's favourite subject, fire. See you there. <laughs>